Yeah, we've been doing this show for several years now. Um, and uh, I think the key to it is just getting a very good whistle and remaining that good whistle for three hours. Now, the trick that I do, I can't talk to, uh, for Mark, but my, my trick is I have five different types of whistles. I can whistle out. I can whistle in. I can whistle with my teeth. And I can whistle with my like kind of lips and teeth. Now that's kind of a power whistle that I do a lot. But then the fifth whistle that I just do for practice is with my tongue. So that really plays into key with, for a three hour show. Well, my name is um, Jay and I actually play the part of um, Tevya. It's kind of the key role there. And uh, I'm Mark and I play Tevya's wife, Goldie. Uh, I, I don't have as many whistling skills, but I, I mean, I'm the only female character, so I think it's kind of a lot of acting involved to play uh, Tevya's wife, and I think I accomplished that pretty well. One of the biggest secrets to, to be able to whistle for three hours is we actually um, gargle and, and drink uh, pure canola oil prior to each show and during intermissions or if we have a time off stage, we'll actually take a swig of it and then get back out there. That keeps our whistles wet, you know, and that for three hours is really hard to do. You might not think so, but that's probably the biggest That's kind of why we have the intermission is just so we can drink more canola oil. Uh, <laughs> One thing that we do, you know, it's a two-person show, but we always will have our uh, road manager come out for a couple of the big numbers, you know, the real big pieces that we need, that third person, that third whistle. He can also hit notes that Mark and I can't. I seem to hit the strong power notes. Mark will hit the lighter ones. And well, then our road manager yeah. comes in and fills in. And it's... I, I, I hit the, the higher ones because I'm playing the female right. lead, so I don't really need to hit those low notes. And the, and the neat thing is the time, because the audience thinks it's a two-person show. That's how we advertise it. But when we have a road manager come in, it hits them like a sack of bricks. You know, the biggest problem we have with the show and keeping it full time as an occupation for us is keeping the seats filled. Now, uh, you know, usually on the bill we say it's a three hour concert. We do have an intermission and um, it's going to be whistling. It's going to be entertainment. It's going to be honestly a lot of fun. And uh, like you were saying earlier about the prices, you know, yeah, we, we kind of yeah. came to that conclusion. A year we have to keep the cost down. We notice there's more people that show up and the costs are lower. Yeah. And, and the average, I think, was about two or two fifty. Yeah, we've had it up to seven fifty or ten dollars, but generally, no one shows up or just a few. And we'd rather the more that are entertained. That's what we are. We're entertainers. We're not in it to get twenty dollars from two people. We're in it to get twenty dollars from five hundred people. Yeah, and there are a few like the Whistler connoisseurs. They will, you know, they uh, they'll, follow they'll see the quality and yeah. they'll follow us and they'll, they'll come to as many shows as they can. But we don't expect that from every crowd. No, absolutely not. In fact, the biggest crowds we've had were the free shows. Absolutely. What a, what a show. I tell you what, I highly recommend it. Anybody should see this, especially that matchmaker song. That was just really moving. I mean, you just haven't lived until you sit through a three hour whistling play, I tell you. So tonight's performance was, was a success. We're hoping for a little bit better turnout tomorrow. 
Um, but sometimes with the opening, you, you can never really tell how a town will receive you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel pretty good, you know, tomorrow will be better, I think. Earlier you had asked at what age we started uh, our careers at, and honestly, I started pretty young. I was probably about three, and I was really kind of the star of the show. In fact, I'm somewhat of a prodigy if I can toot my own horn or uh, blow my own whistle. But I was actually getting ready to go to Juilliard just for whistling, and that was a very young age. But this show took yeah. off, and I just kind of stuck with it. And they called us the uh, whistling toddlers, actually, for the first uh, while. And actually, it was I was so young, I didn't even... You know, I wasn't starting whistling until after maybe the first year of traveling. Probably. I mean, you were on the stage, and yeah. he would... But at that time, we had actually more performers, and he could just do this, and we, yeah. we would cover it, it up. It, 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 it worked. The crowd was still... Yeah. We, we, we'd tell him, because he's real little, Mark, kiss kiss the air, Mark. Mm -hmm. That way, he did the motion, and then nobody could tell, because there's yeah. so much whistling going on. Got to rehydrate those lips. After a long performance like that. And we usually just use any kind of generic brand, canola oil. Um, we found that the, the more expensive stuff doesn't make a difference. You can usually just get cheap, save some money on the road. Uh, you know, people always told me growing up, you know, uh, whistle while you work. So I kind of just took that to the next level. And took I, it to heart, you know. And now that's what we do. Fort work. Whistle for work. For work. 